All right, this time I'm coming to you from Winter Garden, Florida. Behind me is my latest solar install project I just finished. This is a 2019 Newmar Base Star. It's a Class A, it's a front engine, it's a gas, and it is the first RV in over 20 years my clients have owned that did not have an inverter. So they contacted me to come and install a system on this RV that they'd recently purchased. So let's go take a look at the specs of the system I just installed on this RV. It's pretty sweet setup, and I think my clients are gonna be happy with it. So coming around to the driver's side this time, in the rear of this Class A is where the system got installed. So in the very back bay, there's actually two bays that we utilized. In the very back here, this is where the shore power cord comes in, and it's also where the transfer switch is. Now the bay was too small to put everything into it, so we utilized the neighboring bay for the remaining amount of equipment and also the batteries. So let me zoom in here quick and I'll show you what was installed. All right, let's start in this bay here. And up top here, you can't actually see all of the batteries, but there's four 200 amp hour of lithium batteries. So 800 amp hours in total. We have our Lynx power in, our Lynx shunt, and our Lynx distributor, as well as we have our solar charge controller two Orion DC to DC chargers for a total of 60 amp of alternator charging. We have our battery disconnects and we have our smart battery protect. And so the, the DC side of the RV is integrated into the system. So if the battery gets low enough, um, the DC side of the house will disconnect first to try to save on power. So the inverter can try to get things charged up before it gets too low. And then just down below, we just have some uh, DC fuse block here for some of the equipment that's here in the bay. Over here, we have the Faithful Journey RV Services generator start-stop. I'll give you here a demo in a little bit. Um, so that way the generator can automatically fire up based on state of charge or several other parameters. And then on this side here, we have our PV disconnect and our Servo GX. So this is the equipment bay, in essence of where the bulk of the equipment got installed. So this client particularly requested a Lynx distributor, a Lynx shunt, and a Lynx power in versus what I normally use for DC distribution. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the differences between what I normally do and this system. So in my previous videos, or in, in fact, particularly in my last video, I talked about I talked a little bit about the Lynx distributor that I use, but also the, the different shunt and the different power distribution that I use. So this here is an integrated system from Victron. So the batteries connect in on the power in. This is your shunt, which is keeping track of your state of charge. And this also provides power for the Lynx distributor to get the lights to work. Now, yes, there are ways to hack a distributor to get the, light, to get the lights to work without the shunt but natively this is how it's designed to function. All right, so the power in is similar but different than the distributor. The power in does not have fusing, whereas the distributor does. The reason is, is because I believe Victron's design is that on the batteries, according to ABYC standards, you wanna have the fuse within six inches of the battery, and that's why the power in does not have fusing, whereas the distributor does. Talking about fuses, lithium batteries use MRBF fuses. The interrupt rating is much higher and much safer to use with lithium. Um, another difference is this shunt works with the VE CAN network. Um, so this is a nice system. It does take up a little bit more length in space versus what I, or what I typically use. Um, so, but overall still a very nice system. The link shunt you have to configure through the Servo GX. There's no smart Bluetooth talking to this. You gotta connect to it via the Servo to program the settings for it. And then the other difference is, is with the power in, I have a battery disconnect for each pair of batteries. Um, whereas on the other system I typically use, I can get away with one battery disconnect for all the batteries because of how it is set up. So a little bit of a difference, a little bit of cost difference, but overall still a very functional system using the, the Lynx system from Victron Energy. All right, so back over in the inverter bay, this just made sense to put this here. One, because there was enough height, 
but also because the transfer switch is right here so to keep some of these cables short and not having to extend like this here this liquid tight that comes into this box that's going to the breaker panel box so overall by putting the inverter here kept some of the expensive cable short to save on some money um, and it's also lots of space for airflow around the unit to help try to help keep it cool because they do put out some heat so overall between the two bays we were able to get everything we needed for this install all right so now let's jump up on the roof well not jump but go up on the roof and i'll show you how many panels and what panels got installed on the roof all right so we're up on the roof of this newmar bay star and i'll just pan around and you can see this is the roof we have to be careful there's some wires high voltage wire running across so had to be careful with installing the panels but there's eight panels in total these are the rich solar 200 watt panels the the new 250 watt panels just wasn't going to fit too well on this roof <clears throat> so got 1600 watts of uh 1600 watts of solar coming into this rv and so far when the sun has been out we were seeing we were seeing nearly a thousand watts of power coming in which is not bad it's pretty good for these panels so again 200 watt panels eight of them 1600 watts so let's go inside and i'll show you where the touch screen went all right so walking into the rv now and typically what i like to do is put the touch screen somewhere here by the entranceway but because of the layout of this rv so there's a slide out over here slide out over there there was just no way easily readily available to put a touch screen route it there's no cabinets to hide it behind or fascias to put it behind so we had to find a different location for this touch screen so walk back towards the rear of the rv and just before the bedroom right after the kitchen is where the touchscreen got installed this was a the best location we could figure out to install this touchscreen so looking at here again we see our shore power our ac load we can see we're charging here at the moment battery showing uh doesn't show the status yet because it hasn't done a full charge quite yet and then you can see the solar status coming in one thing cool is if i scroll over because we have the generator auto start stop we have this menu here where you can start the generator from this control panel and as long as the servo is connected to the internet you could start it from anywhere let me go outside and i'll give you a demo of this gen start stop working all right so i'm back by that equipment bay you can see the gen start stop box is here now i brought up this vrm instance on my phone and I can click this little button here and you can see the generator menu comes up. If I click on start, it will count down and then send a signal for the generator to start. So pan over here, you can see it's going through a prime sequence to start the generator. And now it's going to wait before it tries to start it. And then here in a second, now it's trying to start the generator. And I don't know if you can hear on the video, but the generator just fired up. So generator is now running, it's manually started. So if we go here, you can click on stop. And now the last relay clicked on and it has stopped the generator. All right, so let me just finish by first saying, I apologize for the quality of the auto. I forgot my normal external microphone at home today. So it has been windy, so there might be some wind and noise around in the background. I apologize for that. So the, again, this is a 2019 Newmar Base Star that did not come from the factory with an inverter. So this system was installed because my clients have had different various RVs for over 20 years. And this is the first one they bought without one. And so they wanted a system. They enjoy boondocking, so they needed to get something installed. Plus, they have pets. So when they go out for the day and they leave their dogs behind, they want to have peace of mind that those dogs are going to be fine because if power goes out the the system will kick on automatically seamlessly and keep those air conditioners running so in this rv 
There was a MultiPlus 2 2X 120 because it is a 50 amp RV. It's 2400 watts of inverted power, 120 amps of charging. We got 800 amp hours of battery, a lithium battery. We have 60 amps of alternator charging. We have up to 100 amps of solar charging from 1600 watts of solar panels that are up, up on the roof. There are eight 200 watt panels. Um, we've got the Faithful Journey uh, generator auto start stop box, which works really well. It's a motorhome. It's got a built in generator. Um, it just works great. We got the Serbo GX for the brains to keep everything monitored centrally, as well as providing that Victron remote monitoring so I can support my user after the fact if for some reason there happens to be an issue that comes up. Um, oh yeah, and then there's the battery protect to cut that DC side of the, the coach before uh, the battery gets too low so that the, some of the chargers can kick on and get that lithium battery charged up enough uh, instead of just draining that battery completely flat. So if you're interested and in looking to get uh, a system installed, upgraded, uh, my contacts will be down below feel free to reach out i'm happy to talk happy to to uh, build you a system uh, design you a system that's going to work well for your needs so thanks for watching i hope you found this video informational if there's something you would like covered or discussed in one of my next videos leave a comment down below and i'll try to uh, answer it in my next video um, I, I do look at the comments i do appreciate the feedback so um, hope you have a blessed day and stay tuned for the next video.